Well, hello there, humans and earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to channel. I'm going to be showing you a couple of videos today in this Festivus for the rest of us holiday season. This is Wasteman 101 on the RU251 up against a completely bewildered SP1C there. I don't know what he's doing, um, but he's just kind of moseying about the joint and having fun. God bless him. He looks like he's enjoying life. And then we're going to have a look at Nuclear Nachos in an absolute monster effort in the Fosh 155. Just a 150 fitty. Um, here we go. Roadkill goes down. 007 SP1C. You're the first victim of what could be a very good game. In fact, I think it's a pretty good game. AE251 is a tank that not a lot of people. Well, I mean, it gets played, but like the SP1C, let's be honest, is a little bit of a roadblock these days. It was one of my best tanks in the stable for quite some time. And for reasons that have never really been made apparent to me or clear, it just got the buttocks nerfed out of it um, and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. And they took a tank that was perfectly good and uh, turned it into a tank that was perfectly tough as hell to run. Uh, not sure why, because at the same time, they brought in uh, tanks like the Dracula and the Helsing and the T-34 and 1 and the Type 62 still runs around and you've got your all your OP SU series TD style tanks and... I don't know what happened, but, you know, the WZs and the... the but the SP1C couldn't have an autoloader that made it effective. It was a cheery thing. Everyone count your uh, Christmas chickens because that was a 225mm AP bounce from the front end of the RU251. Glorious stuff, and that chieftain has absolutely overextended. If you've uh, looked in the dictionary lately and it's uh, looked for overextended's definition, there's just a picture of that chieftain with its arms out going, what, me? What? What? Uh, T-34 and 1, another one of the tanks that we just mentioned earlier, an absolute Bobby Dazzler. Now, the RU251 doesn't doesn't really have the same domination it used to have in terms of speed. One of the big reasons for that is a tank that you're not actually seeing here, the T-49. The T-49 is like the natural predator of the RU-251. Um, no one in an RU-251 likes loading into the other side of the map and seeing a tank that can do like inordinate, big, fat, sweaty wads of high explosive damage to it um, and also... <laughs> You know, chase it down uh, as it rollocks around the battlefield. There's a lever, Mr. Lever Lever. Very tough tank to pan, but with the heat, it's going to go straight through the front of it. Got to be angling, dangling, or, you know, don't do it, 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 don't do it. Yes, he resets camo. Well done. What a wonderful effort by Wasteman there. And then just pops one out. Doesn't stay long enough. Wasn't sure if he was going to be spotted or not. He is spotted again now, though. And having to make some tight, tough decisions. He's at 3,500 damage. Pretty freaking solid. And he's going to have to now play the hero's role as he goes fanging down. This is where you love the RU. Look at it get around this corner. Little bit loving. Oh, a little bit sideways. Holds a very tight racing line there. Into the back of the T-34. Doesn't want to run into the T-34. That would be bad news all round. Come on! Ooh, ho, ho. That would have left a big mark, but unfortunately the T-34 let loose the dogs of hell just a touch early. And the RU's done a pretty good job here. He's loitered around the middle of the map. He's shown some good examples of patience where he hasn't actually pushed out to take hit point trades against that Lerva, for instance, or against the T-95 Chieftain. And that's a necessary evil in an RU-251. For a tank that goes incredibly quickly, it is also a tank that needs a very, very slow hand on the tiller at times because the worst thing you can do in an RU is try to do it all at once just because you're going fast. Going fast does not make you impervious to bullets uh, or rounds or AP rounds or high explosive small German cars hurled out the end of uh, SU-152s. <sighs> Unlucky. The Lerva's not interested, though, as we see an Amigo go down there. Maddox goes down, and this is where he's just going to top up the damage meter here. This is where the mastery really comes from, this very, very early part here. Nice little angle, dangle, wiggle and giggle, and he's behind the Lerva. Side hug, just all round, a super competent, really solid drive in a tank that I haven't featured for a while, and I really enjoy it. So 5K there from Wasteman101. Well done, him. And the Sparpanzer RU251. The first real light tank line that we had in the game, uh, the German lights. And 
I still really, really love these tanks. It's one of the, my very favourite lines in that it had, well, it used to have amazing tanks at 6, 7 and 8. It's still got a very, very amazing tank in my opinion at tier 6, the VK2801. But power creep has not been a friend of the SP1C and the RU251. Here we go. Uh, not that the RU is a bad tank. I just think the SP1C is now kind of bleh. Uh, this is a massive game. Uh, damage-wise from the Chieftain that you can see on screen here. Now, the Chieftain has a very strong upper glacis. That 62 is in the... Mate, what is... He's got a 310 Alpha gun, and he is just getting in the way of what is a monster of rock and roll here. And the first hit of the game, 1,037 damage. You know you're on a good thing when you're pumping a K in to start proceedings. And he's moving around here with the AP... Holding on, and then we get a fire, and we are up already to 1,900 damage after two shots. That is how you want to start your morning. Like, just bang, right out of the gate, have 2K, we're a minute in. Oh, hello, 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 reload, reload, reload. Ah, oh, desperation. 978, thanks very much. Didn't quite get to the quadruple figures, but it was bloody close enough, and we have absolutely, oh, my goodness gracious me. We're at 4K from four shots. That does not happen often enough, in my opinion. <laughs> That is amazing. What an effort from Nuclear Nachos. Uh, but even with that much damage done in that short a period of time, have a look at the team. They are fading away, away like last summer's rose petals. This is a rough gig for some unknown reason. Oh, the HE is just a bountiful, oh, incredible effort here. 5K nearly from five shots. And a little bit disappointed to only be at five and a half there on his sixth shot because they did, you know, the, the Chieftain just didn't have enough hit points left to make it interesting. Still on the big reload here, the auto loader of the Fosh. Now, the Fosh is obviously super popular now. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Nuclear Nachos. Everything is going his way. Everything is coming up Millhouse for the Nachos. Now, we're going to see a 57 and a Fosh on a full reload here. Both have emptied their clips. Uh, and this is desperation stuff for Nuclear Nachos. He needs at least a bounce, at least one bounce. He's angling. He is desperately seeking a bounce. Why is that not taking so long? No, he out he outdoes the uh, 57 for heavy. I thought the 57 heavy would have got it, but maybe he just didn't want to switch to the heat round there, so he, uh, he stuck with it. And Nuclear Nachos is now off to finish the final tank on the red team. He doesn't have a lot of hit points, though. He is a good just six hit points over average roll for that T62A, but that 62A should not be side-scraping the... Oh, that was so lucky. And it was about time that Nuclear Nachos had a little bit of luck go the other way because he has been absolutely fanging into these kids here. Now, Nachos would like the damage, but the problem being that the Amigo on his team in the Big Dog... 215B is absolutely desperate to do a little bit of damage himself and he is now missing with everything. This could be the end of the 7k tilt. He needs a big shot. Come on, Nuclear Nachos. He's not giving him. the 62A. You dirty grub. There he is. He's got one. 492. It's going to tap him out just over the 7k mark. Well done. The Nuclear Nachos gets another bounce. How to finish it with a ram in the date. 219. Everyone loves a good old ram in the date. 7,265 damages. I tip my hat to you, sir. What a lovely human being. Just leaving the schnozzle and the burning embers of the T-62A there. Nuclear Nachos, one of the best starts I've ever seen in a Blitz game. Look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe in the battlefield. And until next time, bye for now.